In this video, we're going to look at how a set of accesses map to caches with different types of parameters. And all of these examples have a cache that has 128 bytes worth of storage, and we're going to assume that the addresses that are fed to the cache are 12 bits wide. While typical processors generally have 32 or 64-bit addresses, for simplicity, we're going to have 12 bits in this example. And so in this first pass, or in this first example, we're going to look at a direct map cache that has 32-byte blocks. So one of the first things we want to figure out is how many bits of the address we're going to need for the offset, for the set or the index, and then finally for the tag. And so first for the number of offset bits, that's based off of the number of bytes in a block. And so we would take the log base 2 of the number of bytes in a block, and we would find that that's equal to 5. So that means we need 5 bits for the offsets. From there, we can then look at the number of sets in this cache. The total cache capacity is 128 bytes, and each set is going to contain 32 bytes. So if we divide these two, this says that we have a total of four sets. And from there, we can figure out how many bits we need. So the number of sets or index bits that we need to address one of these sets is the log base 2 of 4, and that would mean we need 2 bits for the index or the set. And then finally, for the number of tag bits, basically anything that remains of our address is for the tag. So if we've got 12 total bits, and we've already used 5 of them for the offsets, 2 of them for the index of the set, that leaves us with 5 bits remaining for the tag. And so the uppermost five bits would be for the tag. And as an example of how you would break out these different parts, if we had an address of x060, which in binary breaks down into 000, 0110, 0000, since we have five offset bits, the least significant five bits are the offset with two set or index bits, the next two bits would be our index or our set, and then everything else that remains would be our tag bits. To look at how a set of addresses would map to a particular cache or a cache for this configuration, or this shows a simplified version of the cache. So we found that we had four sets, and so I'm showing the four sets, zero through three, and then I'm showing the tag that is currently stored at the set as well as whether it's valid or not. And while each of these sets would also have data, that doesn't really impact how a set of addresses would map to this particular cache and whether or not they'd hit or miss. And then to have a particular example, here we've got a set of nine addresses that we're going to look at in sequence. And I've already broken these up into the tag set and offsets based off of the calculation that we did previously. And so we're going to look at these accesses both on the first set of accesses and then the second time through. So if this was in a loop and we access these repeatedly, because we'll find that this will actually change whether some of the accesses hit or miss in the cache. And so to start off, on the first line, we've got address 070. That maps to set 3 or set 11. So we would make that valid, and then we'd put in the tag here, which is 0. And we would say, since this wasn't in the cache, this was a miss. Going to the next one, it maps to set 0. There is nothing currently in set 0, so this is also a miss. And so then we would put tag 1 into here, and we would set this to valid. For the next axis, it goes back to set 1, 1, or set 3. And we look at that, and we see that the tag that's currently in there of 0 matches the tag that this new request is for, so this would be a hit. The next request accesses set 0. We go over there and find that it's valid, but the tag 1 in the cache does not match the tag 1, 1 that is in the request. So this is a miss, and it means we're also going to change the tag in the cache to be 1, 1 because we're going to bring in this new cache line and replace the old one. For the next axis, we're again going back to sets 0. And we see that this new axis is looking for tag 1, but that doesn't match the tag of 1, 1 we have in our cache currently, so this would be a miss. We would again replace 
the entry, and so that would update our tag to 1. For the next line, we're looking at set 1, 1. We currently have a tag of 0 in there, but we're looking for a tag of 1, 0. So that would mean we'd have a miss, and we're going to update our tag here to 1, 0. The next axis is going back to set 0. It's looking for tag 1, and since we currently have tag 1 in there already, we would have a hit. For the next one, we're going back to set 0 again. The tag of 1 that's currently in the cache does not match the tag of 1110, so we would have a miss, and we'd update our tag for that entry. And then finally, for the last axis, we are looking at set 3. We find that it's looking for tag zero but we currently have tag one zero in there so this is a miss and we would update this tag to be zero and so this would be the pattern of misses and hits we'd have for the first time we had this sequence of addresses if this sequence repeated again we'd have the cache in its current state at the end so we could repeat this and so looking at the first axis again it's going to set three and we see that it's looking for tag zero and if we look at our cache, we see that tag zero is already there. So this first access is a hit when it was a miss the first time through. For the, the second access, we're going to set zero, zero and looking for tag one. Uh, but unfortunately, the tag is not doesn't match. So we've got another miss. And we would update our tag to be one. For the next access, we're going back to set three. And we're finding that we're looking for tag zero and also have tag zero. So like the first time, this is going to be a hit. For the next axis, we're looking at set zero again. And we're looking for tag one, one, which doesn't match what we have in there. So this is a miss. And we'd update our tag to one, one. The next axis is going back to set zero. And again, now looking for tag one, which we just replaced. So we're going to have another miss. And we're going to fill in the block with tag one again. For the next axis, we're going back to set three. We're looking for one zero, which is not currently in the cache. So we'd have a miss and we'd update our tag to one zero for that entry. For the next axis, we're looking at sets zero zero and we're looking for tag one, which is what we have in there. So we'd have a hit. For the second to last address, we're looking at set zero again, and we're looking for the tag 1110. And that isn't in the cache currently, so this is going to be a miss. And we'd update our tag again. And then finally, for the last access, we're going to set three, looking for tag zero, but finding that we have currently tag one zero. So this is a miss, and we'd replace it with tag zero. And so then we could look at what was the hit rate for these two different sets? So the first time through for our hit rate, we found that we hit two of the times and we had a total number of nine accesses. So this would give us a hit rate of approximately 22%. And then the second time through, we'd have a hit rate where if you look, we look, we see we have three hits. And again, we had nine total accesses, so in the second time through, our hit rate improved to 